What is up everyone? Circleflex here bringing you guys another video. I'm a little bit late with this one. That's because I uh, I basically had to fly back to the Netherlands for uh, uh, basically a week or two. I had to do some shit here. Uh, it was kind of like a half of an emergency kind of thing. Don't worry though, I'm not going to get into too many details, but that's the reason why I haven't streamed for the last two days. And uh, that's also why I have nothing on YouTube, because basically I've been just been really fucking busy with, uh, let's just call it real life, I guess, as I drop something there. Uh, anyway. Uh, there is now the Italian challenge, which I think started yesterday, maybe two days ago. Um, where uh, through a series of missions, you can win the new Italian tank. But that's not all. Uh, if you don't finish the whole race, you can still get a discount on buying it, right? So let's take a look how much it is normally. Uh, it says here, available for you, one. You, don't, you do not see this tank or the package, unless you're logged in, by the way. And this is on EU, and it's... Um, almost 59 euros which is insane but then you realize that they add so much useless shit to it like what am i gonna do with seven with 1.7 million like why so this is really bad all right uh, this also means that this thing will always be expensive as shit because of the token system <coughs> The, <laughs> the same happened with the T44-100. The T44-100 in the standard price is like 50 euros now. Because the way you could get it uh, at first was through missions, right? So this is always, always going to be an expensive tank. Which is a bad thing and should be noted. Um, so yeah, but that, that's a little bit bad. However, the marathon itself is really, really good. Um, and I'll show you as well that finally... They've made the... Um, World of Tanks in-game event thing, like the in-game campaign, have always been such a mess. This UI has been always so shit. But for this one, the Italian one, they finally did a good job. Wow. I'm impressed. So good. So here you can see all the missions you have to do. Now, there's a couple of other good things about this campaign. Not only is this you, not, you, uh, you know, the UI really good and... You can see what exactly what you need to do. They also now made it in such a way that you can either do some like, let's say, some a little bit more sophisticated way of doing the stage. Um, let's see, then you know, there's ten stages, and you get the Italian tank. Comes with a crew as well, hundred percent. But there's also a way of just earning XP. So if you don't have it to your ten, or you're like, you know what, fuck that shit, I cannot get a high caliber for to save my life. You can also get 5,000 points of basic speed. Now, this is basic speed, which is both a good and a negative. Um, the good thing is, is that you don't need premium time in order to compete with everyone. Because it's basic speed and it's, that doesn't get changed with premium time. So that's a good thing. And overall, I think this is a good way of doing it. The only kind of hard part here is, uh, here is that it's literally only basic speed. So your daily doubles don't count. Uh, times 5 XP that isn't this weekend for the... Anniversary doesn't count all that stuff. So it's just hardcore grinding uh, The other kind of the positive here as well is that you can grind one tank So if you're grinding for something up to tech trees uh, You don't have to switch between all kinds of different tanks to get as many dailies as possible So all, all in all I think this is great, right? And as you go through the days the missions do get harder and the basic speed that you need to earn to get to this next stage uh, Becomes a lot higher as well. So where we start off at stage one, which is 5,000 basic speed as four, you already need 30,000. So in general, I think all in all, you're coming close to um, uh, like 300,000 base basic speed or something that you need to grind if you cannot get the tier 10 vehicle version of it. Now, there's another good thing about this campaign is that is that you can grind every single stage whenever you want. As in, you can start with stage one, do stage two and three all in one day if you wanted to. These are not uh, uh, specific for... Uh, an X number of days, so you don't need, if you already, if you, just like me, you haven't started yet, <laughs> two days in, um, you know, you can still just grind as much or as little as you'd want uh, to get these stages done, which is really fucking good, alright? I think actually think they've done a good job here, and uh, if we look towards what we can get, it's a little bit easier to see on the on the website, so the stage one, you get some Kasum Bulls, not very good, then boosters and some more. These boosters are pretty good. It's like free XP and XP. Then stage four, you get the equipment that you need and a premium day, which is also good. And then this is uh, stage five is whatever. But now we get into the good stuff, guys. Stage six, eight, and nine will get you credit boosters for 50% for two hours times 10. This is 30 hours of 50% extra credits. 
Sorry, not even 30. It's 60 hours because it's two hours each. Uh, quick maths. <laughs> and you also get a special Italian style at tier, uh, or stage 7. I keep saying tier, but obviously it's just the stages. Um, and like I said, you do get the crew with it as well. So, yeah. Uh, there's no 11 stage. It, it's a bit weird in the UI, but you get what I'm saying. You need to do all 10 to get the tank. Now, what if... You actually don't play this as a professional. <laughs> you don't live stream this 6 million hours a week. And uh, for example, you only get to say tier 5. So if you grind towards this, um, every single uh, tier that you do will give you 10% off your purchase of the web shop uh, price as far as I know right now. So if you do half the missions, you're um, quote unquote only paying like 30 euros right and um if you buy it that way you cannot grind the tokens later again so you can't double dip into the uh, into all of that um so keep that in mind as well so what I, what i would say is grind as much as you can you have until this date right here 12 o'clock uh to do as much as you can i uh, you know a lot of people will at least get to the fifth one or so um uh, and, you know, for the real grinding people out there, tier 6 is really worth it, because I think this is already credit boosters. Yes, see? And credit boosters on EU are rare as shit. I know NA can always buy them, but EU is, uh, no, they're almost, they're really hard to come by. Um, so, and they're really, really nice. I used a bunch of these during the Christmas special. I grinded 100 million in about a month. It's just nuts, and the Christmas special made it extra nuts, of course. But yeah, so keep an eye out on the sixth one. This might be a really good one to get. And of course, then the tank itself becomes a lot more affordable. You can bring it, bring it down to all the way to free or at least to 20 euros or something like that, right? So all in all, I think this is actually the first challenge thing that Wargaming's done where I feel like there's been a lot of effort into it. I think the UI is really clean. I think the, the model, the business model is pretty damn clean all in all. Especially for Wargaming's sake. And uh, I think they've done a really good job here. And the only de negative about having a token-like system for a new trade premium is that it will have the T44-100 effect, as we could maybe to call it. And that is that if they ever sell this tank again, it will likely be pretty expensive compared to normal tier 8 uh, premium mediums, which are anywhere from like 26 to 33 euros-ish. Which is also weird that there's... Like a 5-6 euro difference between them. But hey, that's a talk for another day. So overall, this Italian challenge is really, really good. And I think the tank itself looks promising. Uh, and they actually buffed it before releasing it. So a lot of the reviews you've seen are done on vehicles that aren't buffed yet either. So you can either just grab your wallet and just flesh out 60 bucks. But let's be honest, just do some of the missions and, you know, get yourself a discount. I, I think everyone can at least get about roughly 50% discount just grinding away. And if you have tier 10 vehicles, you might as well try the tier 10 vehicle ones. As, and then if you really can't do it, then you'll still be on your way for XP, right? Because you still get basic XP in tier 10. But this is an interesting thing to note. Not everybody will have tier 10s and not everybody likes to play tier 10s. I don't really like to play tier 10s. Uh, these days, because I think the meta is really bad, mostly because of the 268 version 4, Type 5 heavies, all that stuff. So, I figured, why not talk about some other things you could use to get that basic speed going? And there's a couple of pointers I want to give that I think almost everyone, or at least a lot of you guys, will have access to, to grinding out the basic speed requirements. First off, you need to have a tier 6 or higher, tier 5 doesn't count. <clears throat> so hopefully this <laughs> if you don't have a, if you don't have a tier six yet that's kind of a bummer you cannot do the missions however tier six there is something that <laughs> this is uh well i almost hate to say it but guys listen it counts basic speed what gets a lot of basic speed i'll tell you it is scout tanks tier six scout tanks and especially this little bugger the type 64 will farm you so much basic speed, it's actually crazy. So I think a baseline what you what you want to go for is roughly getting a thousand per game, right? Roughly. And you need to be top 10 in order for your basic speed to count, I think, as well. And scout tanks tend to get a whole lot of basic speed if you just do a little bit of damage. And that's the key word here. We need to do some damage in scout tanks. Scouting doesn't give you anything XP-wise, right? It will still give you a good game. You know, you still win games. 
but damage is where it's at. And personally, tier six is uh, there are some pretty good tanks here. The T forty seven is really good. Amex twelve T is pretty good. And what from what I've seen, I feel like the fifty nine sixteen MT twenty twenty five are pretty good as well. The T twenty one is the one I would stay away from, and the VK is one I would stay away from. Um, a lot of you people will probably have a Type 64 by now because it's pretty cheap. It's kind of a seal clever, um, unchanged stats from the normal tier 6s, and it got third step, so it only got better. All right. Another, you know, off chances here is, of course, the good old Cromwell B <clears throat> and the T3485M, which is now for sale always. <clears throat> so those are some tanks of tier 6 you're going to watch out for. Uh, what I do not recommend doing is doing TDs, which tend to not sell spot and do not get a lot of basic speed. And uh, heavies are always a bit tricky at the lower tiers. Uh, because of the matchmaking, right? It's always going to screw you over. However, tier 7, <clears throat> also the scout tanks, if you bought the 3057, by god, that's pro I, I don't know how many games I've had that are in an easy 1200-1300 basic speed uh, on an easy game where I feel like I didn't do much and it's still got like a thousand plus basic speed. It's actually insane in these. Uh, but T71 CMCDs, the T71 DA especially, uh, if you still have a Type 62, uh, almost all of these scouts except for, well, here we go again, the Germans, the SP1C, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would not really recommend it. But the LTG as well, pretty easy. But I say I'd rate the 57 first place, T71 DA second place, T71 CMCD, Third place, and then the other ones are pretty similar. The Type 62, WZ, LTG are all kind of really similar tanks. And again, Scout tanks is where it's at. The mediums at tier 7, uh, M10 is not a bad choice, being a premium. Uh, they tend to get a bit higher basic speed as well. <clears throat> so a Panzer M10 is still something I would recommend as well, which is really fun. All the other mediums I would kind of stay away from, but they're still better choices than most of the other things. Again, I would stay away personally from uh, TDs and heavy tanks and in these lower tiers. Now, tier 8, I would just completely stay away from tier 8 unless you have the M4190. That's the only tank I would recommend playing right now. And that's because, again, uh, it's a premium, it's unnerfed state. It's basically like a tier 8 and a half. P packs a hell of a punch uh, and can be top tier nowadays. The only reason I do not recommend playing any of the other tier 8s is literally matchmaking. There's going to be a lot of people playing tier 10, and tier 10's favorite matchmaking for the matchmaking to put you in is 3-5-7, which means you're going to seal club tier 8s and 9s, right? So tier 8 is a no-go. Then tier 9, <coughs> at this point, you could argue you might as well try and play tier 10 to get the other missions done, maybe per chance before you grind out the basic speed. Um, however... Again, scout tanks at tier 9 are such a joy, such a joy, and they tend to get really high basic speed as well, a thousand plus easy, even on mediocre games. Now, I know not everyone will be as good as one another, or, you know, not everyone is unique out there, but I think everyone can do this, right? Uh, the one stinker I would stay away from is the Devisit 132A. Run the T49 with the 90 mil, otherwise you should also stay away from it, and all the other ones are really good, right? <clears throat> this is also a case for the mediums and the heavies at tier 9. They will always get some good matchmaking. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can, and you, there's also a bunch of TDs you could probably play. I would stay away from the slow stuff and obvious stuff. <coughs> such as the, the SDRV T95. Stuff like this I would really stay away from. And I would mostly focus on light tanks always. But if you don't have light tanks, focus on the medium tanks. And the heavy and TDs at tier 9 is kind of the same, right? And then at tier, at tier 10... You know, you're probably going to do the missions. The missions are, you know, getting anywhere from high caliber to bouncing to all that stuff. <coughs> so for the for that reason, you, you just need to adjust to whatever mission you're doing. You're obviously not going to bounce a lot in the Leo 1. Uh, but again, if you are farming the uh, basic SP and, for example, you need to do a blocked mission, but you don't have a good armor tier, uh, tier 10, and you're just going to farm the XP, again, uh, scout tanks are relatively well. Mediums are your safest bet, are your safest bet as always. So yeah, that is the Italian challenge. Um, ho hopefully I could help out some people that um, are looking to do uh, the grinding of the, the basic speed. Uh, definitely, definitely recommend picking up the tier 6 and 7 scouts. Um, and it's <laughs> that's basically my biggest tip. And, you know, you got to find a lot of people playing the same tanks, right? You're going to probably see a lot of Type 64s. But I figure I would just give my little 
insight on the mission. And I think overall, it's, I think it's actually a really good job of wargaming this time around. I think they've done and they actually nailed this campaign finally. It's a lot, a lot more visually attractive to the UI in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 100% go for it. Again, sorry for a little bit late video. I hope you guys still enjoyed my insight on this. Um, I got more videos coming up. I think tomorrow I still have a highlight from last week's streams. And then on Monday, I start streaming again here. So sorry for the content drought, but I had to take care of a slight emergency in the Netherlands. So anyway, <laughs> that's enough talking for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.